President Doggett is issuing over 50 executive orders today alone. Washington analysts are reeling with a virtual blitz of new laws coming out of the White House, affecting everything from public housing legislation to the war for freedom in Venezuela. Hello, Gregory. Scan and Scram has a special price on Minoxidil. Stock up today and keep a full head of hair. Hello, Shirley. Scan and Scram has a special price on Maximum Protection Tampons, aisle 9. Hey, excuse me. Listen, um, I'm a tourist just trying to ride the train. And, um, I, I don't, I don't think my chip is gonna work. Uh, I was wondering if maybe if I gave you some coin, you could grab these for me. It'll work here. They work everywhere. No, it, it's just I don't think mine will. Listen, I'd do anything if you could help me. Sure. You'll have to come out to my place. Sure. Thank you, Gregory, for shopping Scan and Scram.
Hello. Greggy. Take your shirt off. Well, you don't waste any time. So what is all this? It's my stuff. Look, I'm not really into kinky shit. What are you, what are you doing? What happened here? What is that? Did you have an accident? Oh fuck, you're a fucking cop? I'm not a cop. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. A fucking undercover with the fucking beard? I don't work for the government. Then what the fuck is all this? It's left over from an old job. Oh god damn it. You pulled your chip out. Fuck you. Why'd you pull your chip out? There's a fucking war going on in Venezuela right now. Anybody that goes over there does not come back. Look at, uh, look, I'll, I'll suck you off, but after that, just fucking forget about me, okay? You're in no papers. Don't call it in. I'll, I'll do anything you want. I don't want to get involved. Okay, I'm, I'm not bothering anybody. I just, I, I didn't do anything. Just put your shirt on and go. Hey, I'm asleep right now. If it's urgent, thumb the pound key to wake me. Otherwise, I'll catch you in a couple of hours. Hey, buddy. It's beautiful weather out here. You don't know what you're missing locked up in that cubicle all day. Uh, listen, when you get a chance, shoot me a message. We need to talk. Why is he? Goodbye, Greggy. Hey there. You're not making much progress with that. It's no big deal. You dug gardens before? Yep. This kind of soil? Dirt is dirt. Hey, why don't you see if they have a spade like this over there at the tool shed? I know how to dig a garden. Suit yourself.
See, with this spade, I just ease it into the soil. Wiggle it around a little bit. And then gently lift it out. Are you sure you don't want to try my spade? This, this was a waste of time. Well, that didn't take long. It doesn't make any sense for me to be working over there in that community garden. I mean, I could plant a garden for you right here in your backyard. I don't have any tools. I can get a spade. <sighs> don't you like it over there? They can't really expect me to wear this. How cute. Please, Mother, don't make it any worse. What's the matter? Nothing. Why aren't you at the garden? The place fights. I like walking over there in the afternoons, especially when all the blooms have opened up. Sometimes when I wear my Desdemona hat, people actually recognize me. Not often, but it's nice when they do. It's so interesting to see what they've planted. The beans and corn, peas, oh, and all of the rose bushes. Do you remember that rose bush that we planted at the house? No. Oh, sure you do. I wanted to have a rose garden, just like the gardens in Portland when I was a little girl. They were beautiful. And I was going to put a garden right in the front of the house where everyone could enjoy it and people could smell the fragrances. I'm not sure what happened. I think I got the wrong kind of rose bush or something, but I put it in the ground and it did absolutely nothing. Got black spots all over the leaves. When it did bloom, they looked absolutely terrible. Anyway, one day when I came back from the studio, it was when I was making that film with Spielberg, your father had told the gardener to dig it up. I was so angry with him. But of course, I never let on in front of you kids. We knew. Well, you did not. I mean, how could you? We never fought in front of you. We didn't even raise our voices when you were in the room. Oh, damn it. I stuck myself again. Here, Mother, oh. let me do it. I was a good mother to you. At least I could buy you a new blouse if you lost a button. You were, Mother, and you still are. Nothing I can do about it now, except spoil my grandson. Speaking of which, you worked hard this morning. You must be famished. Why don't I go to the kitchen and see what we can scrounge up for lunch? We're all making sacrifices. If you can't get a job, then at least plant a garden so we have fresh vegetables. This town is dead. There aren't any jobs. Why did we move here? We've had this discussion. I know it's not the best solution, but it's our only option right now. Waiting tables won't feed three mouths. Don't talk to me like I'm a gun goozler. I'll get a How job. How about a nice peanut butter and honey sandwich? And I've got a jar of pickles. We can take it outside and wave to the train as it goes by. I won't be back until four. You should work for the railroad. Have you ever thought about that? You are so good with time schedules and everything. They're not hiring. Have you asked? I asked out at the station and I asked out the office out back but you would be so good at it. And I could see you in that conductor's costume, waving at the children as the train goes by. Grams, I'm gonna put in a tomato garden for you right here in the backyard. Here? And we can plant beans and peas mm -hmm. and corn and surround it with roses. Well, do you think that it would really work? I mean, the backyard is covered with that black shit from the train. I'll scrape it off. How about it, Grams? Don't you think the plot at the community garden is a better place? I can't work there. Danny! I'll get a job. I said I'll get a job. 
I just have to find a job. Hello, Daniel Dominici. Hi, I'd like to fill out a job application. Sign says not hiring. You can try the rusty nail. I don't think they're hiring either. Did you ask? They're only hiring locals. I moved here a year ago and I still haven't found a job. This town sucks. Hey. Got some. Let's go to the river and chill. How'd you score? Got it from a no papers. They're growing this shit. <laughs> right. We should blow this place. Move up there. If you can find it. I hear they scan you. If you got a chip, they won't tell you shit. No, I'm digging mine out. This town's a hellhole, you know? There's nothing to do. Even if you do get a job, I want to know what you're doing all the time. You can't get a real job without your chip. Hey, what's a real job? Working for that AmeriCorps? <laughs> you couldn't get me to work for those people. Hey, they're hiring someone at the food bank to move boxes. I got it. It's mine. Not if I get there first. A mysterious stranger still baffles police in Denver six weeks after he was found with no ID chip and his thumbprints burned beyond recognition. President Doggett is scheduled to announce today the administration's plan for ending the war in Venezuela. Insiders tell Internet all the time the president has to escalate troops in the other region, yet critics argue the armed services have no more troops to deploy. Daniel. Meanwhile, the minority leader in the Senate has accused President Doggett of breaking her campaign promise only three Oh, it's you. How's your garden coming? It's fine. I got a flat. Planted anything yet? I came to get my bike fixed. I open at 10. I'll come back. No, it's alright. I'll fix it. But maybe I better come back. It's all right. You gonna ride on this? Just visiting? We moved here. Oh? We moved in with my grandmother. Who's your grandmother? Isadora Domenici. I thought so. Wouldn't it make more sense for a bike repair shop to be in town instead of all the way out here? I like my privacy. Just you and your cat. How rustic. We don't like a lot of visitors. You've got a screwy way of running a business. Works for me. What do you think? About what? Oh. 
So, do you want a new tube? Or do you want me to fix the hole? Well, what does it cost? I'll patch it. You don't remember me, do you? At the garden the other day, I remember. Well, what do I owe you? Tell you what, I'll cut you a deal. Without a plastic liner, you're gonna have a flat within a week. Well, I wouldn't have gotten a flat in the first place if I... Never mind. I'll charge you for the I'll... next one. I can hang. Mom's paying for it anyways till I can find a job. Forget about it. Are you sure? See you next week. Don't count on it. Goodbye, Daniel Domenici. What's up? Hey, talk about a small world. I just saw your son. No shit, what's he doing there? Ange must have moved in with Izzy. I think he came along. What's he look like? He's grown up. He's taller than we are. Well, send me a picture if you manage to capture one. Oh, you know, my, uh, my cameras weren't on. I'll get a picture next time he brings his bike in. When was the last time you saw him? Ange still won't talk to me. Is she talking to you? No. Danny doesn't even know who I am. Well, if you see Ange, tell her I hope she's happy. Last time I saw her, she told me to eat shit and die. And then she called me a mocking stock of humanity. You should have heard what she called me. So, uh, what are you working on? Uh, I can't really talk about it. I was just wondering, have you heard anything about the note papers around here? Let's just say it's impossible to track them in the mountains. But you're trying. Can't talk about it. I gotta go. God is calling. Hey, I think Danny's gay. That's what this is about. You want permission to date my son. What? You brought it up. No. Just because I tell you he's gay doesn't mean that I want to date your son. Shut up. You wanted to do it with me the whole time Angie and I shared the apartment with you. Not even. You walked around naked every time Angie left for class. No, I didn't. If I'd have said yes, we would have been on your waterbed in ten seconds. <laughs> You're flattering yourself. Imagine, me being your father-in-law. That's a riot. Send pictures. It must have been really exciting to make all those movies. It was hard work. Do you miss it? Oh, it was a fun ride while it lasted. Sometimes I do miss the fans. It's not going to get these tomato plants planted, though. Come on. Grams, mm -hmm. do you know that guy that runs the bike repair shop? Who? The bike repair shop up the road. I never learned to ride a bike. Well, he acted like he knew you. Well, what's his name? Well, I don't know. He's just some guy. That's his plot. And I've known a lot of guys in my lifetime. I mean, is he handsome, married? Is he about my age or younger? Younger. Why are you asking? He called you Izzy. Really? Only L.A. people call me that. Uh, what did he look like? Well... His beard, blue eyes, short hair. When he smiles, he has these wrinkles up here. He fixed my flat tire for free. He said he wouldn't charge me. He doesn't think that you're a charity case, does he? I mean, what did you tell him? Well, I tried to pay him, but he wouldn't charge me. Well, why not? He said I'd be back. Well, I don't want you obligated to anyone. Now I'm going to give you some coin, and I want you to go back this afternoon and pay him. I don't want him to think of you as a shuler. Daniel 
Domenici. Look, I'm closed. Unless you got another flat. I want to pay you back for fixing my flat. <laughs> now forget about it. No, I want to. I won't take money from you. My grandmother doesn't want me to be obligated to you. Huh. Forget about it. You're not obligated to me. Well, wait. If you want to take my money, then I was thinking I could do something to help you around the shop. I don't need any help at the shop. I'm right now with Izzy. Wait. How did you know my grandmother was called Izzy? She worked for a company that I used to work for. Well, what job? Look. I fix bikes, okay? And right now, I'm baking my bread. So unless your bike is broken, I'll see you in the garden sometime. <laughs> no. Hey, I got another flat. What did you do? I hit that rock in your driveway. Come in. What are you baking? Bread. Is it hard? I thought you wanted your bike fixed. I do. I just thought we could talk, that's all. Okay. What did your mother tell you? My mother? Yeah, about men who live alone with their cat in the woods. She doesn't know I'm here. <laughs> she probably does. There are sensors all the way up to the top of the hill. She can find you on her Dennis Lee. She doesn't have one. She says it's a violation to our constitutional rights, or something like that. Anyways, Mom gets all hyper about the stupidest things. What are you doing? I'm mixing the bread dough. Is it hard? Oh, go wash your hands, I'll show you. Okay, so just dive in. Mmm. <laughs> this is so good. Better than store bought. This is so much better. Well, when we get your garden planted, you'll have vegetables all summer. Here you go. <laughs> and you can start cooking for your family. You'll have to show me. Sure. <laughs> I also want to put in an arbor, or some place with a bench, some place shady for my grandmother to come out and sit. You know, I thought I saw her out there, but she was too young. Isn't Isidore in her late 60s? Well, she used to live in L.A., so she's had her wrinkles removed at least once. I should have said something to her, but I don't really talk to people around here too much. People around here aren't really friendly. It's a tourist town. People come and go. I used to hang out with these guys, but one of them did something really stupid that pissed me off. Anyways, they're stupid. Okay, I don't mean stupid, I just mean they don't want to do anything with their lives. They just want to hang out and score pot off the no-papers. I'd avoid the no-papers if I were you. Why? Well... Why'd they pull out their chip? What are they hiding from? There were these people living on the beach at home, when there was a beach. I don't know what happened to them. Everyone just ignored them. You know, I got some uh, blackberry jam that I made last week. Let's see if it's still good. I always felt bad for them. So if I had some coin on me, I'd give it to them. Who? The people living on the beach. They did it to themselves. What do you mean? The only people who don't have chips right now are criminals who are hiding from the law. Mom says it's just people who want their privacy. If I want my privacy, I stay home. But you have to go out. You have to go to the store. But I did know this kid once who never got chipped. His parents wouldn't let the hospital chip him. You're kidding. 
He's going to have a hell of a time getting ID papers when he becomes an adult. How's he going to prove who he is? I don't know. Fingerprints, maybe? <laughs> Good luck. Mom, Mom told him that he'd get a job with her at the college, but then we had to move. You can't help everybody. Yes, you can. Okay, well, the government can. That's the reason why we have a government, to look after its citizens. I used to believe that. When I was in college, the economy was terrible and the unemployment rate was really high. Kinda like today? And we were in the middle of a war, but hardly anybody knew anything about it. Kinda like today? <laughs> so, we elected this president, and we thought he was gonna change everything. I mean, we were really excited that finally everything was gonna be taken care of. No one person can do it all. Yes, you can. Well, not alone, but if we all work together. I wish I still believed that. When I worked for this company, we developed this software that could scan people's chips from a further distance, so if there was an earthquake, the rescue workers could find people buried in the rubble. I thought it was going to be a really great idea. That is a great idea. Well, it didn't turn out the way I thought it would. But I did get some awards. That's for best product development, outstanding code engineer, and the one in the middle I'm most proud of. It's visionary of 2022. I want to do something important like that. Something that changes the world. Hey, why don't you take some bread home to your grandmother? Are you sure you don't want it? When you come back, we can bake some more. What time did you get home? I don't know. I gotta go. I love you, Mom. Where are you going? Danny! Danny! Where did this bread come from? Try it. I baked it. It's good. Danny? Mom's pressuring me into getting a job. No one's hiring. They only want locals. Have you thought about AmeriCorps? No way. Well, they do the kind of things that you want to do. They rebuild houses, clean up after natural disasters. I want a real job. It is a real job. You get a check. It's a great experience. Everybody should do it. So if I did apply, and I'm not saying I will, but if I did, they wouldn't take me anyway. I'm not a local. Tell them your grandmother lives here. But I didn't grow up here. Yeah, well, with all these coastal refugees, I guess it's only natural they'd only hire locals. So I'm screwed. At least give it a try. Enlisting in AmeriCorps is for losers. You said you wanted to do something to help people. Something important. You'd be rebuilding houses and cleaning up after storm damage. So what do I say? Flash them your smile, because you've got a great smile. Tell them your name. Give them your Dennis Lee number, and tell them you gotta go because you're helping somebody in the garden. I have to think about it. No, don't think about it, just go. I look before I leap. Just like your mother. You know her too. Oh, we met. Think about it. Just go and do. You can tell me all about it tomorrow. Please don't play with the toys. You wear out the batteries. What's up? Hey, did they change the water in your fishbowl yet? No, in fact, it's starting to go Pakistani around here. Uh, listen, there's this kid who just moved here and he's uh, trying to get into AmeriCorps. It's a good program. Yeah. Thing is, though, the recruiters are only accepting their local homegrown. It's very difficult for a newcomer to get accepted. Well, it's tough all over. Do you know anybody at the Corps? It's a big government. But a small world. 
I just read a story about a man who fathered a kid and never saw the little tyke. And then 20 years later, the kid turned around and filed a lawsuit against his father for being an absentee dad. The court ordered Papa to pay millions in retroactive child support. Subtle. Well, I'm just bringing it up. I'll make some calls. Great! How's everything else? Couldn't be better. Show a little more cleavage. Men like that. This isn't an acting job. Oh, sure it is. You want the customers to like you. I'm doing this for the money. Just like acting. Don't worry, dear. You're going to do fine. Never dreamed I'd scrape this low. Well, I took roles that were beneath me, but I took them. Besides, you have to remember, actors are whores anyway. <laughs> look at you. Look at me. You look great. <laughs> Grams, mm -hmm. do you remember that guy I told you about? The one that called you Izzy? Yes. We've been hanging out. He's kind of cool. His name's Greg Forster. Do you know him? When did you talk to Greg Forster? This morning. He's a plot in the community garden next to ours. He lives here? Oh my god! Did he tell you that he lives here? Yeah, he's the guy that I told you about that runs the bike repair shop. What did he say to you? We've been hanging out in the garden, and I went to his house, and we made some bread. So you really did bake that bread? Danny, Greg Forrester is not a good person. I don't want you talking to him. What are you talking about? If you see him on the street, just go about your business. Let him go his way, and you go yours. You didn't tell him anything about you, did you? We've been talking a bit. How many times have you seen him? A couple of times in the past few weeks. You knew Greg lived here, didn't you? That's why you had me move here. Mother, I just don't know about you constantly meddling in my life. I'm not meddling in your life. I didn't know that he lived here. This is the first time I've heard of it. You've always been arranging things for me. I do things to look out for you. I'm just trying to help. You're not helping. Did you think Greg and I would just bump into each other in town by coincidence? And then everything would be forgiven, like we're best friends again? Angelina, I didn't know that he was here. I don't know where you get off having these conspiracy theories. I do know that I didn't raise you to behave like this. A person with moral integrity? No, you certainly didn't. Get off your high horse and look around. After everything Greg's done to you? I can't believe you'd come up with something like this. I've forgiven Greg. I've let that go. And that's what you need to do. That's all that matters. That's not all that matters. Look at the way you're living. Think about what you've lost. I didn't have anything, so how could I lose anything? I want you to stop talking to him. He hasn't done anything wrong. I think he's kind of cool. You don't know him. He's helping me get work? He said he's going to talk to someone to get me in with AmeriCorps? Why shouldn't I hang out with him? You shouldn't have anything to do with him for no other reason than for what he did to your grandmother. He didn't do anything to me. I'm sorry, Mom, but this is your problem, not mine. If I see him, I see him.
this little piggy and a garden. And this little piggy uh, dropped out of the world and became a recluse. And this little piggy fell in love. And this little piggy ran all the way home! <laughs> Mom says you went to school together. Yeah, she was dating my uh, roommate. We shared an apartment for a while. I think she's really upset at you about something. We had a disagreement. What about? It doesn't really matter now. No, I want to know. Okay. It used to be that when the paramedics scanned your chip, they had to weigh the scanner very close to your shoulder so they could get a read on the chip. So that idea that I had about being able to scan the chip from a further distance, well, that got applied to stores. You did that too? Well, it wasn't just my idea. I mean, Ant and Michael and I all brainstormed it together. It's just I'm the one who figured out how to make it work. And that's why she's still mad at you? I think she doesn't like what the technology does. Well, she's that way. I kind of felt like I've lived in a monastery my whole life. Every time she'd come home from teaching her classes, I'd have to turn off all the electronics. I didn't even have a dentist lee until I was 18. I was so out of it. You seem pretty with it now. So then you hired Grams? Uh, I convinced Ange to ask your grandmother to do it. She did it for free. That's why you hear Izzy's voice when you walk into the scan screen. I got you something. Open it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, how cool! How did you know I like these? I saw you in the store. You saw me in the store? When did you see me in the store? A few weeks ago. You were playing with him. <laughs> I wonder why Grams never told me about making those recordings for the stores. Well, it was only supposed to be for emergencies. That would be a really good idea. Oh, I want to do something like that. Something that changes the world. <laughs> The problem with big changes is how it affects the details. Well, they should make me a benevolent dictator. <laughs> that is an oxymoron. No, it's not. I had this whole digicity that I created. There was an amusement park, there was the work districts, there was the mass transit. Everyone had a job. There was no unemployment rate. Everyone was really happy. Except the ones who weren't. No one had a reason to be. They had everything. Well, okay, I mean, if they had everything, but... But I mean, what about the people who didn't have everything? They didn't have a reason to be unhappy. They had everything. Well, okay. What if I was in love with this guy, but he wasn't in love with me? So does that mean that he has to be with me in order for me to be happy? But he wouldn't be happy. I bet he would. Okay, but what if he didn't? But you don't know. Okay, but let's say that he didn't. I mean, if he was with me, he'd be unhappy in order to make me happy. I bet he'd want to be with you.
Greg! Daniel. Greg! Dimitri. I got in. I got accepted. You did? Yeah, they said they really like what I had to say and that I start next week. Way to go. I'm so happy. I know it's going to be hard work, but I think I'll really like what I'll be doing. Well, you're going to be here in Chama, right? Yeah, and on the reservation out west. Thanks for your help. I didn't do it. You got the job. <laughs> Did you start work today? Not till Monday. Where have you been? You look worn out. I do. I just went for a ride. Oh yeah? Where did you go? Just up the hills. Did Greg go with you? We ran into each other. What's going on between you and Greg? Nothing. He's helping me plant a garden. Is that all? Isn't that enough? I can't get the vegetables to grow any faster. I wasn't talking about what you're doing in the garden. What your mother wants to know is, well, you're spending an awful lot of time with Greg. You don't come home for dinner in the evenings, and in the mornings you're up and out of the house before I've even fixed breakfast. Well, sometimes I wonder if you've even come home at night. Yes, I'm coming home. He's a bad influence on you. No, he's not. You don't know him. You can't tell me how to live my life. Maybe we should invite Greg for dinner. That's the last thing I want. Well, I'd like to see him again. Would you please let me parent my child? I'm not a child. I'm not trying to interfere. It's OK, Grams. I'm used to this. Oh, no, you don't. Don't you pit your grandmother against me. I'm not against <sighs> you. I'm 20 years old. I don't know why I moved here in the first place. I cannot do this. I cannot do it! You're going to abandon me now? After all I've done for you? Look at me working as a waitress! I've got a master's degree and I'm waiting on rednecks who call me baby and honey and drop their silverware just so they can watch me bend over. I'm doing this so we can survive and I'll be goddamned if you're dating Gregory Forrester! You knew him over 30 years ago! 25 and that's another issue! This isn't settling anything. Would you please stay out of this? Oh, all right, fine. I'll just go to my room and close the door and pretend for a moment that this isn't my house and that you're staying here as my guests. Mom! At least talk to him. All right. All right! You two want to see him so bad? Have him over for dinner. When? Monday. I don't want to do anything that's going to upset you. Well, I'll ask him. Are you happy now? I just want my daughter and my grandson to be happy. I will do anything I need to do to make this family happy, and that will make me happy. Mother, I'm happy, okay, Mother? I'm happy.
Daniel Domenici. Grams wants you to come over to dinner Monday night. Hmm. I have other plans. What? Studying. You're always studying. What's so important? Trying to undo something I did. You don't want to see Grams? Where's the house? Fine. Don't come if you don't want to. I'm asking you, where's the house? 621 Sierra Vista? I'll be there. Wear pants. Anything else? And shoes? <laughs> oh, now that's going too far. Grams is old. Don't freak her out. I don't think anything could freak out Isadora. It means a lot to me. And it means a lot to me, too. Getting intel, the no papers in the San Juan Mountains are planning to strike the major cities. What are you getting? After 150 years of mining, those mountains are like Swiss cheese. Satellites can't see what they're doing. What do you hear from Greg Forrester? Greg? He's living out there. He's repairing bicycles. He was seen in a convenience store with the no papers. He could be helping them. Greg is not involved with the no papers. He's a security risk. They shouldn't have let him go. He's not involved. It may be time to take him out. He would be working here if they'd given him security clearance. I'll prove to you he's not involved with the no papers. How? Hey, I can't talk. I'm, uh, meeting somebody. We might have a job for you. I'm out of the loop. I haven't kept up with any of this stuff. Twelve-year-old knows more than I do. Just the same, I'm gonna send a file over to your dentist leave. Just take a look at it and let me know what you think. Gonna take credit for my work again, huh? If it keeps America safer, you bet. Eh, if I have the time. Just read the file. You understand this stuff better than anyone. You have no scruples. What did that prove? That he has nothing to hide. I just uploaded a covert explorer to his dentist lead with that file, and he took it without question. I'll be able to see everything and hear everything. If he's involved, we'll know. If not, leave him alone. Hello, Greg. Hey, Ange. 
You look great. I don't feel so great. Greggy, hi, how <laughs> hey, wonderful Izzy. to see you. I brought you some baubles from the oh, garden. Oh, you're beautiful. Well, come in, don't stand out there like a shooter. <laughs> Hello. Hey. You look nice. So do you. I got these for you. Reggie, I can't believe we're practically neighbors. I had no idea you'd move to Chama. Well, I had to leave L.A. Too crowded and not enough water to grow a palm tree. Here I can just relax and look after my babies. Danny, would you get the silverware? What are you wearing on your feet? I mean, you look like a penguin. <laughs> Danny insisted. Oh, he did. Rams. Well, no one dresses up around here unless it's a really special occasion. Well, I didn't want to show up on your doorstep looking like a no papers. You might shoot me. Tempting. At least you're wearing pants. You take off those shoes. You'll be Thank much you. more comfortable. I found some uh, steak today at the store, and we're going to have goulash. How's the spy business? I'm not in the spy business. How's the tracking down and recording everybody's private business business? Angelina, don't start. We are going to have a pleasant conversation tonight. I quit the company six years ago. Should we talk into the flowers or can the chip pick up our voices from here? Angelina? The chips can hear anything in the room. <laughs> but I don't have any of those anymore. Actually, I just found out they have a chip now that takes pictures. No doubt some sin worm is probably in a basement watching me walk around the shop all day since I signed that no-compete contract. Is someone really watching what goes on in the shop? No. No, no, no. Uh, they wouldn't be interested. So what are you doing, Greggy? Bicycle repair. Uh, much more low-tech, somehow more fulfilling. And I'm gardening a little bit, hanging out with Danny. You still acting? Oh, no. The community theater here asked me to do some shows, but I don't know. After all, this is Chama. I think my time on stage and screen is over. It's kind of weird. Every time I walk into the store, I hear the robot reader. I mean, I know it's a machine, but it's my grandmother. Well, we wanted someone who sounded warm and familiar. You wanted a celebrity. <sighs> Grams keeps telling me to buy toothpaste. I'll always take care of you, dear. She should have been paid for that. When the company was bought out, they should have paid her. I was thankful that you even thought of me. Somehow sort of thought you blamed me. Well, I guess I should have received royalties off of every person that walked into every store in America. But that's life. I just want you to know I had nothing to do with the stores. I mean, that happened after I was fired. No way. Fired with a severance package. <laughs> Doesn't matter anyway. It was a shit job. Well, who would have thought that I'd be the voice of America? <laughs> and it killed my career. And they got me too. Bastards. Cross spiders. Flotches. May they rot in hell. So, uh, what are you working on, Izzy? Another project? No, really and truly. I open my mouth in front of a director and they exclaim, The Robo Greeter! Honestly, Greg, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I've actually thought about doing some writing. Your autobiography? N no, we're not gonna write those stories. <laughs> <laughs> now that I have my daughter and grandson here, I don't think I'm gonna have a lot of time to do any writing. It's only temporary. No, you can stay here as long as you want, you know that. I want this to be your home. We'll be moving again as soon as I find an open faculty position. We move almost every year. Not every year. Why'd you leave your last position? The campus closed after the hurricane. We didn't own a boat. The tidal surge flooded our house and destroyed everything. Carpet, furniture, mold started growing inside the walls. Well, your insurance should have covered that. We didn't have insurance. <laughs> and you always took a million precautions. How could you not have insurance living on the coast? We lived five miles inland. They all keep saying on the news that the altitude is falling. The only thing falling is my bank balance. They must think we're stupid. Look who got elected president. House rules. No politics. We're going to have a pleasant conversation. The time may come when you're going to have to break those rules. 
The elections are rigged anyway. What's the use? We still have a democracy, as long as we stand up and fight for it. That's right, Danny. You fight for it. And when they fire you from your job, you can ask yourself how you're going to eat. This is all your fault, and don't pretend it's not. Danny, do the dishes. We just started eating. How's it his fault? Never thought I'd see you again. And? I want you to know you will not be invited here for any family gatherings. I can't control who my son sees during the day, but I won't let your influence corrupt this family. I haven't done anything to hurt you. Now, you may be mad because Michael abandoned you and Danny, but I didn't do anything to hurt you. Nothing. Don't bring his father into this. And don't act all innocent, either. We knew the technology was dangerous. We knew how it could be used. We didn't know that. The three of us sat around the kitchen table till four in the morning talking about all the dangers in chipping people. I even said a burglar would be able to use our scanner to find out if anyone was in the house. That was 20 years ago. Look at the crime rate. The police are using it to find criminals. To scan every car that drives down the freeway? Stopping you if you go down the same street twice? What good is that? We vow to never let our research out and to destroy it because we knew the implications were horrific. You and me and Michael, all three of us in that dinky little apartment. We burned your research book on the stove. It set off the fire alarm and it woke up the old couple next door. Don't you remember that? You tried to take the pan outside and it burned a hole in your pants. It left a scar on your leg. Don't you still have it? We pledged to never, never let anyone develop this software. But you did it anyway, and then sold the company. And Michael, God knows what Michael is doing. How can you date him, Danny? He's your father's best friend. More goulash? Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was your first day at work? You didn't tell me you knew my father. I told you about Michael. You didn't tell me he was my father. Michael is your father. Danny, she says he left because of me. It wasn't you. They just saw the world completely differently. Let's not talk about this right now. No, I want to. They didn't have a good breakup. He must have been a total asshole. Maybe he was to Ange. She told me my father's an arrogant pig. He wanted to be a father for you, but she wouldn't let him. Do you still talk to him? He asked me to send a picture of you. What's he like? He's smart, like you are. He used to be idealistic, just like you are. But I think he's bought into the program now. I'm not like him. You're right, Danny. You're not like him. Sometimes I think she gets mad at me because I remind her of him. No, Danny, no. Don't say that. Your mom's very smart. And she's very strong-willed. She and Michael and I were working together on this project, but she didn't like the implications of what the technology would bring, and so she sabotaged her own work. Sabotaged it? I can't fault her beliefs, but this is information technology, and, and that means gathering private information about people. I mean, uh, our lives used to be very different. Like it or not, Danny, the world changed. You mean this is the world you created? Yes. It's the world I created. Tell Michael, I never want to meet him. I 
I guess I better excuse myself. Good night, Greggy. I'm sorry, Izzy. I didn't think it would turn out this way. Good night, Danny. Mom? Not now, Danny. I love you. Hello, Greggy. Hello, Isadora. Oh, hey, Izzy. Oh, Greggy, hi, how are you? Thanks again for dinner last month. Oh, sure. Actually, I'm looking for notepads. Have you seen any notepaper? I'm gonna write just a few stories down. Nothing professional, just ramblings. Well, why aren't you using your dentist lead? Because I can't coordinate my brain with my thumbs. It's so much more complicated than typing. It's easier. Well, I can't get the hang of it. Well, here are some stickies. Well, great. Five of these and I could write haiku. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's Danny? Uh, he's fine. He, you know, he comes home from work, showers, hardly says a word during dinner, goes to his room, shuts the door. You should talk to him. He won't talk to me, I've tried. Well, he's gonna have to talk to someone. His mother leaves next week. Of course, he can stay at the house, I'm not worried about that, but it's starting to feel a little like a monastery around there. Where's Ange going? Don't you know? I guess you wouldn't. She got a job at a university in Indonesia, of all places. Really? Jakarta. Now, her radical, uh, independence in a Muslim world might not be a good mix, but at least it's a job, and there's not a war there, thank God. Uh, it's starting to get bloody in Venezuela from what I hear. I don't want to think about it. Why don't you come by the house this evening? N no, Izzy. I saw Danny in the garden, and he walked away before I could get near him. You know, he's had quite a crush on you, until, of course, he found out that you weren't perfect. I thought it was more than a crush. Well, it was for me. Well, he's young. He hasn't learned yet that it's our imperfections that make us human. I guess I'm superhuman. No, I can top you there. <laughs> you know, Greggy, when I first met you years ago, 
and uh, I was kind of hopeful that you and Angelina were seeing each other. Of course, that was before I knew anything about Michael, and why tell your mother that you're pregnant? But anyway, then I found out, of course, that you weren't into girls. But for a moment, I actually thought of you as a son. Then what did you think when you thought I might become your grandson-in-law? Well, yes, if you two are good for each other, then age doesn't matter. He can learn from you. I think I was learning a lot from him. Whatever happens, don't start calling me Grams. I don't let on, but I actually hate that. I mean, how can I be that old? I still feel like I'm 29. <laughs> I'll catch you later, Izzy. The national program created 20 years ago to rebuild infrastructure after natural disasters has never been implemented before on foreign soil. Sources inside the White House say President Doggett has selected AmeriCorps enlistees to rebuild schools and medical facilities in the Venezuelan war zone. What's up? Doggett is sending everyone in AmeriCorps into combat. Housing reconstruction. Bullshit! What the fuck is she doing? Greg, I'm at work. Everyone in the program? It's a full deployment. Oh, no, she can't. Enlistees will be notified tomorrow. If they don't report for assignment, the scanner network will locate them. There's no draft. They don't have to go. They enlisted. And what if they refuse? Greg, I can't talk right now. Call me. Yes? Danny, you don't know me. I know who you are. Well, okay. Look, there is a lot I would like to tell you, but not right now. Is Greg there with you? No. I've got to talk to Greg. Then call him yourself. I thought you were his best friend. You need to tell Greg his Dennis Lee is tapped. They can see and hear everything. Tell him yourself. I can't, Danny. That's the thing. Well, how do you know it's bugged? Because I'm the one who tapped it. Danny, listen to me. This is very important. You have to ride into the mountains tonight. I'm going to bed. No, Lee can't. Look, pack some food and some clothes. Leave all your electronics. Don't take any of it. There are plenty of people in the mountains who can help you. This is a joke. I know what I'm talking about. Do what I tell you. Mom's right. You are an arrogant pig. Any news in your region? No. Nothing to report. Izzy. Greg. I have to see Danny. It's late. I, I know, but it's important. I have to see him. I said to come by in the evening, but not this late. Oh, please, Izzy. All right, let me see if he's still up. Hey. Hey. I've got to talk to you. Your best friend Michael called. He said your Dennis Lee's tapped. What's going on? You know, I may be a little naive, but I'm not stupid. You two are totally cranking me. Danny, they're sending everyone in AmeriCorps to Venezuela. What do you mean? What did Michael tell you? He told me to pack my stuff and leave. Oh, he's really serious. They are going to ship you out. AmeriCorps is an army. <laughs> it doesn't matter now. 
I didn't join the army. They can send you anywhere they want to. I'm not going to fight in some stupid war. They're not calling it fighting, Danny. They're going to rebuild houses is what they're saying. But I promise you they're going to put a gun in your hand and they're going to ship you into a war zone. No way, I won't go to the training center. <laughs> you don't have to go, they're going to come for you. Why didn't you tell me this could happen? Well, it never could before. The president has got Congress all tied up. Anybody who disagrees with her is just called an anarchist. They can't take my baby. No one can stop her. It's worse than I feared. What am I supposed to do? I'm not a soldier. We're gonna have to hide you, Danny. How did Michael know that my Dennis Lee is tapped? He did it. What? He said he did it. I run a virus count. The file he sent me. Oh, fuck. We'll pack tonight. I can drive us to a friend's in Oklahoma. You can't take your car, Ange. The police scan it, they'll know he's with you. Now let's just try to keep a calm head. Tomorrow morning, we'll be able to think much more clearly. Danny, I know you're very angry at me. Maybe you hate me. But I have fallen so deeply in love with you. I can't imagine living without you. If they ship you off to that blood jungle, I'm never going to see you again. I can't imagine going back to the way it was before. Please let me help you. I didn't know what love was like before I met you. Michael said I should go to the mountains. He said people there can help me. I'll go with you. You can't, Mom. You just got a job. Forget the job. I don't know where we'll wind up or how long we'll be gone. If you join the note papers, it's going to be very difficult to get back into society. I can't leave my baby. Angelina. Baby, it's going to be okay. It's time for me to make my own life. Hello, Reggie, Daniel. Angelina, is it Give it a rest. Why didn't you tell me what you were doing with my voice? It was supposed to be for medical records in an emergency. I never worked again when those machines popped up in every Walmart, pawn shop, and convenience store in America. You should have listened to me. I knew what the software could be used for. The potential. It, it was exciting to dream about the possibilities, but yeah, it was too unlikely. It seemed pretty far-fetched. Then we started developing chips that record events. It was supposed to be for pet owners. A veterinarian would inject the chip in your cat and you'd know where the cat has been or where the cat is now. No more lost cats. We demoed it in Vegas. It got a lot of buzz. That's what did it. I started thinking, oh, wow, we could use this technology to track disease, spheres of contagion. <laughs> Two weeks later, we got an offer for a buyout. Uh, I wasn't too sure about it. What did Michael do? Michael needed the money. We both did. We signed the papers. Well, a week later, I got pulled into security. I mean, these are guys who I've known for years. And suddenly they're treating me like I'm a criminal? They said I didn't pass the security check. Why? They exiled you. They gave me a check, pulled my badge, and told me it would be a bad idea if I wrote any more code. Like I was a hacker. You are a hacker. 
They just didn't want you working against them. I'd never been so scared in my entire life. I was afraid if I walked down a dark alley, I'd get a bullet in the back of my head. Oh my god. I cashed the check. I called a friend to break into my house to, to get some books, my tools, pick up Edison. I ditched my car. I didn't know if they had a locator on it or not. I knew I couldn't cross the borders because they could track me if I did. And that's how I wound up here. I, I figured it was so far away, no one would look for me. And after a while, when nothing happened, I, I figured they weren't looking for me. I was so lonely and until I met you. We've got each other now. This is what I've been working on every night. Uh, it's a fabric that should block the sanders. Try it, wrap it around your shoulder. Does it come in other colors? <laughs> Goodbye. No. Isadora. Now maybe that's something you want to work on. Angelina. I'll leave you this back. At least this is one way we can fight back. But in your case, we have to destroy your identity. Do it. Greg, what are you doing? It has to come out. With a paper knife? It's better than a steak knife. It's okay, Mom. Life goes on. So small and so dangerous. They're not looking for you. They will be. It has to go. Goodbye, Daniel. Goodbye, Greggy. Goodbye, Izzy. Wow. No identity, right? No identity. The hotter it is, the less it'll hurt. Izzy, this should make up for some of the royalties you should have earned. What is this? Well, it's what's left over from my payout. I can't take that. No, you deserve this. No, you and Danny need this. Keep it. <laughs> Not where we're going. I can repair bicycles to barter what we need. Danny will find something useful. We'll be okay. We'll be better than okay. Izzy, I need to ask you a favor. Of course. Anything. I don't know where we're going to be, and it could be pretty difficult on Edison here. He's a good cat, and I've had him 12 years. Could you look after him? Oh, gosh. <laughs> You're giving me your cat. <laughs> I'm loaning you my cat. Does he use his box? Mostly. Bye, Edison. I promise I'll come back for you. Goodbye, Mom. 
be careful. It won't always be like this. We'll be okay. It'll work out. I'll take care of your cat. You better take care of my grandson. I will. Bye, Grams. I love you. You promise? Thank you.